Hello, how are you doing? Recently I made a video talking all about Richard Power's new novel, Bewilderment, and how much I loved reading it and what a moving experience it is. And a large part of that is because of the descriptions of the natural worlds that the author writes and the story of a father and son that go on camping trips and how they connect with nature, uh, but also the looming threat to the environment and the son's activism to try to take what steps he can in order to preserve it and I found it so inspiring and and beautifully written you know that I just wanted to sort of go out into a park and you know experience nature in in that way again and and also uh, there was you know a report from the UN recently about climate change uh, with uh, a lot of facts um, you know that weren't all that surprising but you know it was really connecting how humans are affecting the the environment and how this is a crisis which is growing increasingly hard to ignore and so yeah I want to read some more books you know about both nature but also uh, about how to conserve you know the the world around us and so I naturally being a big fan of book prizes uh, looked for a book prize and yes of course there's a book prize all about this um, which is the Wainwright Prize and uh, I've talked about this award before um, back when uh, Robert McFarlane's um, book Underland was uh, nominated for the prize and this book did actually win that year and it was one of the best books I read that year in I think it was 2019. It's such a powerful story and uh, yeah and so I, I loved this book and um, so yeah I think it's a good place to go for guidance of recommendations and uh, just recently they announced the shortlists for this year's award. So this this award has been running for eight years. It, it awards uh, nature writing and development in nature writing and also you know books that encourage people to go out and explore and enjoy the natural world and uh, but starting last year uh, they made a new category where uh, there's uh, one category which is for nature writing and then there's another category that's about writing about global conservation and so there are two shortlists for you know this year's award and so um, so I'm gonna go through all of the books that are on both shortlists and uh, give their descriptions of them and then talk about you know ones that I um, am really eager to, to get to reading and uh, the winners uh, for this year's award is going to be announced on September 7th so it's uh, quite soon but I'm hoping to read at least um, two or three before then and uh, so I'll um, give descriptions of all the books um, but I'd love to know if you've read any of these and would particularly recommend them uh, or if you're interested in reading any of these books now uh, or if you've read any other books that are about either nature writing or are about sort of conservation um, that you would especially recommend um, please let me know in the comments below because I'd, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, so first off I'm going to talk about the shortlist for the nature writing uh, category. So um, these are the seven books that are up for this year's award and uh, starting with Featherhood by Charlie Gilmore and this is a memoir uh, about a father and son relationship which is sort of strained and distanced because the the father left the the family fairly early on and so the two aren't really able to talk to each other but they both separately form relationships with birds and that they help to raise and, and care for and so it's about this sort of connection that they have in that they, they both have interest in in birds um, but they aren't able to really connect with each other so I, I think that's a really interesting sounding dynamic. English Pastoral by James Rebanks. This is the story of the author's life growing up on a family farm in the Lake District of England and how he was schooled in traditional farming methods but how that style of farming has rapidly changed over time as the economy has changed and the methods by which we get our food have changed and how he has been trying to reintroduce these traditional farming methods to the English landscape and recognizing that 
alterations sort of need to be made, you know, because times have changed and how it's not a, about a utopian ideal of the English pastoral, but making just a decent place for all of us to live. Thin Places by Carrie Nee Doherty. This sounds like such a fascinating story. Uh, so the author grew up on a border town uh, between Northern Ireland and Ireland, and uh, so was really on the doorstep of, of the troubles, and also because her parents, um, one of them was Catholic and one of them was Protestant, so um, really, you know, experienced the divide and sort of felt like her family didn't really fit in anywhere. And uh, so it's about her experiences of, of that, uh, but how these lands, which are sort of claimed by different nations and sort of fought over so much, really, you know, don't belong to everyone. And, and it's about her sort of re-examining this environment around her and trying to sort of reclaim it her own and as her own and, and find strength from it um, living there and returning to there and and uh, and so yeah sounds like such a powerful story the wild silence by Raynor Wynn uh, so the author's previous book the salt path um, was a big major bestseller and was about her experiences uh, with her husband when her husband was diagnosed with a terminal illness and um, how their their business also collapsed at the same time and uh, how they drew strength from going on a lawn coastal walk together and living out in, in nature during this time. And so this is the continuation of that story and also how they uh, go to a Cornish farm and try to rewild that, that farm and their experiences uh, doing that. And so I've not read the, the Salt Path, so I feel like I sort of need to do that before reading The, the Wild Silence because I, I assume that there's going to be a lot about this book, which assumes you know, you already know what's happening with this this couple's story. Um, so yeah, I think I'd like to go back and read The Salt Path before first reading this. Um, but if you've read this and, and or read both the books, like I'd, I'd love to know your opinion about that. The Screaming Sky by Charles Foster. This sounds like such a, a moving story. Um, so swifts, the, the birds, um, we're quite accustomed to them stopping for a brief amount of time during a particular season um, in the, the areas we live in. Uh, but only seeing them for that time. And the author loves these birds so much that he decided to go traveling to try to follow their migratory path um, around the world wherever they happen to go. So, so following these birds and how, you know, Swifts experience the world in a way much different from what we do, you know, often set in uh, our, you know, particular location that we live in, um, that they, you know, cross the globe and, and have this different sense of both the world and time than what we do. So it's trying to experience the world, you know, through how these birds see it and, and how the world has been changing around them with, with climate change. And so it follows the a year in the, the course of a year um, going through uh, this author's experiences and also shows some um, illustrations of the birds. And, and yeah, so it sounds like such a touching story. I Belong Here by Anita Sethi. And this is an author and a journalist um, that I, that I know somewhat, uh, mainly through social media, um, and I say that only because I remember an incident um, which the author writes about in this book where she was subjected to a horrible racist attack when uh, she was taking a train um, through England and uh, yeah, and was basically verbally assaulted and, and accused of not belonging here even though she was born in England um, but just because of the, the color of her skin she was attacked like this and she found that experience horribly traumatizing and um, and so writes about that here but also about her experience and process of you know, recovery and trying to reconcile her feelings about it by exploring the, the natural world in, in England. And so it follows her experiences with that. And so it's it's been a book that I've been wanting to get to reading because it sounds like such a powerful and, and a really relevant and timely story. Seed to Dust by Mark Hamer. This book recounts the author's experiences maintaining his personal garden over the course of the year. So it's another book that's following 
you know, the seasons and the changes in nature over the course of the year. And he meditates on how our experiences of the garden are personal, you know, to us, and uh, we have our own experiences with it. But there are obviously things that which can be enjoyed and experienced by anyone who encounters them. And he has a very particular relationship with his garden and his home because for uh, quite a long time he was homeless himself. So he's also reflecting on that experience and how this this garden he makes, you know, gives him a sense of home. It also includes some really beautiful illustrations of his garden. Next are the six books which are up for the Writing on Global Conservation Prize. So first off there is Fathoms by Rebecca Giggs. And this is a combination of natural history and science and philosophy looking at how whales experience of the world has been changing because of climate change and, and environmental threats and uh, also how our relationship to whales have changed um, because of technology and so you know looking at the whole world of, of whales and I think there is an Apple TV series or or film or documentary um, which is based on this book um, which is also called Fathoms or at least I, I assume it's it's based on this because it's also called Fathoms and it's relatively new um, but um, so correct me if, if I'm wrong because I haven't watched it yet but um, but yeah this is a book I think sounds really intriguing. Islands of Abandonment by Cal Flynn. This is a book I've, I've talked about before that I'm interested in reading um, because it documents the the author's experiences traveling all around the world to different locations um, that were once inhabited by humans but have since been abandoned and so looking how the environment has adapted and changed and come back into the fore you know since um, humans have abandoned these places so it's a very haunting look at these different locations and there's different photographs um, illustrating uh, the author's experiences going to these places but um, but yeah about how the the world sort of rewilds itself after humans have left. Under a White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert. I, I talked about this book previously because Barack Obama chose it as one of his summer reads and it asks the question, now that we've done so much damage to the environment, what can we do to still save the world? And the, it's about the author's experience meeting with a number of different scientists that are exploring different methods for, for doing this and some of them are quite radical um, including, and this is, this is absolutely like crazy uh, uh, physicists that are contemplating launching uh, tiny diamonds into the stratosphere in order to uh, protect the the world and stop global warming and which will change the the sky above us from blue to white and that's that's just wild isn't it another book that looks at the question of how we can stop climate change is net zero by Dieter Helm and uh, this this author is an economist as well as a specialist in the environment so um, is well placed to look at realistic answers and, and ways that we can uh, stop climate change uh, both on a personal and local and national and global level and so to stop carbon emissions and arrive at a point where we're, we're at this net zero point where we're no longer seeing this accelerated global warming. A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough and David Attenborough is is probably one of the most famous natural history filmmakers in the world. I mean, whenever I want to connect with the natural environment, but you know, can't physically do so, I go to watching one of his programs and just get get lost in these images and and his commentary on on the natural world. And he wrote this book um, at the age of ninety four, and so it's his reflections on his life and his experiences and witnessing the the way the world has changed over the decades and the steps that he thinks are necessary in order to take to, to stop um, the extinction of the species because he sees biodiversity as you know one of the most important factors in maintaining balance in, in the world and um, which is you know an issue that's talked about a lot in the novel Bewilderment is, as well and, and yeah I just adore David Attenborough as so many people do and, and so I, I'll really like 
revel in reading his own words. And finally, there is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, and which is all about the story of fungi and, and mushrooms and how these organisms really support life on on the planet and and connect the the world in in strange ways you know like there's a whole underground network of of mushrooms that connect trees and and allow them to be able to talk to each other there there are so many interesting aspects to fungi which i think we don't really realize and and how the author argues that they're really a necessary part of the world and how they their their unique abilities can be harnessed to help support the environment during this time of of climate crisis so those are all of the books on the two short lists lots of enticing ones to explore and read and like I said I'd love to know uh, if you read any of these and would recommend them uh, or if there are any that you're really eager to get to now yourself. I think the first two I will probably read are Under a White Sky and I Belong Here uh, just because I've heard so many great things about Elizabeth Colbert's book and I've been really wanting to get to Anita Sethi's uh, memoir but uh, yeah so I'm hoping to read these first but yeah a lot of these I, I hope to get to at some point, but it'll be really exciting to see uh, which books are chosen as the winner on September 7th. I'll put a link down below to the prize website if you want to find out more about it and, and follow along with the, the prize. But thank you for watching. Um, I'm hoping that the weather will, it's a bit murky at the moment, but I hope that the sun will come out and maybe I'll go out and read under a tree, you know, just to celebrate, you know, this, uh, this prize. But uh, I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.